Boa noite, galera do Manifesto Bar. Eu sou a Dani Buarque e hoje eu vou entrevistar Doug Aldrich. Hello, guys. I'm Dani Buarque and tonight I'm going to interview Doug Aldrich. Vamos esperar ele entrar. E também vão chegando. Bem-vindos todos. Boa noite. Eu vou... Eu vou traduzir o máximo possível, porque a gente tem um, um tempo bem curto com ele. Então, eu vou entrevistando e tentando traduzir ao mesmo tempo. Eu nunca fiz isso. <risos> vou dar o meu melhor para todo mundo entender. É, eu preciso desativar o chat, né? Desculpa, gente. Eu vou desativar o chat. E aí, no final da entrevista, se der tempo, a gente vai abrir a caixa de pergunta. Tá? Mas a gente tem super pouco tempo com ele, então vou tentar sintetizar o máximo para a gente conseguir aproveitar melhor o tempinho que a gente tem com ele. Vou esperar o homem entrar. Vou deixar, vou deixar ativado por enquanto, aí quando ele entrar eu desativo. Ah, ele entrou. Eu vou convidar aqui e bloquear este chat. Desculpa, gente. Um pouquinho a gente... Hey! Hello, hi there. <laughs> how are how are you? I'm good, Doug. How are you? I'm doing good, sweetie. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, I, I thank you so much because um, beside you talking to us today, I guess it's your birthday, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's my Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, just um, just basically uh, been you know taking it easy today. Doing a little construction at my house, so I kind of going back and forth doing that stuff, and then um, and then I wanted to see your smiling face, and I wasn't sure how to do this, but um, then I saw it was live already, so I was like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just in the right time. I, I I just look at it in like one minute ago, so it's everything fine. Thank you so much. We are very happy to have you here. We have a lot of people waiting to see you. And uh, to make sure that everyone gets what we say, I will do a quick translation to Portuguese after your answers, okay? Okay. Sounds good. I'm just going to... Here we go. That's the start. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's an intro, right? <laughs> So, uh, first question is about Brazil. You were in Brazil a few times, and by the way, this live is being streamed by Manifesto Bar, that is one of the most traditional rock clubs in Brazil. Do you recall jamming there with a few local musicians when you were here with White Snake? I believe so, but I, it's you know, we do a lot of jams on the road. I just, I, I know the name Manifesto Bar, so I think I do remember that, but. Um, It seems it's been too long. I got to come back. Yeah, to refresh your mind. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to Brazil. Period is just, you know, as soon as possible. I can't wait. And Manifesto Bar would be on the list. Cool. And uh, let's talk about your current project, Dead Days. Uh, you guys released a new album, Holy Ground, last year, right? Yeah. And I know that you and Glenn Reels had worked together on, on his first uh, solo album. And this partnership keeps going on that day's new album. So tell us more about this process of recording the, the album and what does the future hold for the band? Um, But anyway, um, no, no. So um, to answer your question, yeah, I, I actually worked with Glenn and we toured in Brazil back in 2015. And um, he, he just wanted to do a kind of a, to like a, a power trio and he wanted a guitar player that he could trust and I said uh, he called me and goes do you want to go on the road and I go yeah and we had a blast it was some of the most funnest jam sessions I've ever had because Glenn we would start the song off and then as a trio you can really go in a lot of different areas and it's great um, 
And, but then, um, you know, I joined the Dead Daisies and he went off and did his solo stuff. He was doing the uh, Deep Purple, um, the, the greatest hits Deep Purple shows. And we were looking for somebody to sing. And they management said they would been talking to Glenn and what did I think? And I thought that that would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? That would be like so cool. So um, we, we, I called him and I said, Glenn, what do you think? He goes, man, um, it's time for you and I to make some music together. Let's do this. So we did. Cool. Então, galera, ele falou que ele estava aqui no Brasil, mas ele faz bastante jams né, no mundo, então ele lembra do manifesto, ele lembra do nome do manifesto. É, e ele falou que a relação, eu perguntei, né, como, é, como que tá sendo, The Days, é, eles lançaram um novo álbum, ele tá trabalhando com o Glenn Reels, e ele falou que, putz, quando deram a ideia para ele de, do, do, do Glenn Reels entrar na banda, ele pensou, como é que eu não pensei nisso antes, e que tá sendo incrível, basicamente é isso. Ok, so, uh, you, you, you played with the old white snake, two of the most important references in the world of rock. How was it for you to take part in them? Well, it, um, it was amazing. I've been so lucky to work with all these singers, including Glenn. I mean, Glenn is the voice of rock. He's a monster, you know. Um, but I started off um, working with Ronnie first, and Ronnie was great. He really, you know, he believed that I was going to do a good job for him and I did my very best. And um, we had a great, we had a great run. Um, we did an album called Killing the Dragon and then we went on and uh, toured for the whole year. And then later I joined Whitesnake. It was just supposed to be two months and it turned into, turned into uh, over almost 12 years and, and a lot of music and stuff. And so both of those situations were were amazing learning processes for me to to um you know sit like very close to david coverdale and write songs and he he was in this this exact room you know and i'd, I'd work on a riff or something and he'd start singing it was just like whoa you know and the same as with glenn you know with the dead daisies um glenn is basically songs just ooze out of glenn you know so it, it's it's really it's really amazing to work with him Cool. Ele falou que foi muito importante na carreira dele. É, ele falou que o Ronnie, né, o Jill, que ele confiava muito nele e ele aprendeu bastante nesse processo. E depois, na, na sequência, ele entrou é, no White Snake, era para ser só dois meses e acabou que foram 12 anos aí de parceria. E a mesma coisa com. <risos> Desculpa. Com o Glenn. Que é muito bom trabalhar com ele. Ok, uh, so what's your top three guitar guitarists? Uh, top three, it's so hard, you know, because there's so many, but I would say um, if I had to pick right now, my mood right now, um, obviously I love Jimmy Page. His, you know, everything he did was so, uh, it was just, just so kick-ass groove, rock and roll groove stuff. And, um, and I would say Jeff Beck, um, yeah. for the way he bends, the way he bends these notes and, and his feel. Uh, it was the first time I ever heard um, a, a solo guitar record. And it was like the guitar was speaking for itself. So mm -hmm. it was it was fantastic. And then, um, I mean, it's, you can't, it's hard to say three. Um, but I would say Gary Moore right now. I love Gary, Gary Moore. Moore. Gary Moore's aggressive, you know, his aggressive playing. And, and his melodies, you know, I, I love that. Oh, but then you gotta, they... you, you gotta say Randy Rose, Eddie Van Halen, Tony Elmy, Richie Blackmore. You can't say three, it's too hard. Only three, <laughs> okay. You, you said seven. <laughs> uh, eu perguntei para ele qual que era o top três guitarristas dele. Ele falou que o Jim Page, é, Jeff Beck, que foi a primeira vez que ele ouviu um álbum né, de solos onde tipo, a guitarra falava. É, falava né, por, por ela mesma E Gary Moore Que é um lance mais agressivo é, I have a few questions here That people are sending it to me Do you mind if, if you reply? Sure okay. you, you, you can do the soundtrack While I, I pick the question <laughs> okay. This is the one right here This one Thank <laughs> you. 
There you go. Oh. Do you still use your racket to pedal? Yes, I do. I have it on my pedal board, uh, which is in. Uh, I've got a few of them, but um, the main one that I've been using that I like the most is a reissue. It's kind of like a special uh, special edition one, and I use it. Um, it's the best fuzz, uh, best distortion gain fuzz. It's got a clean boost and a dis and a uh, and a fuzzy distorted boost. And it works great. You can use them together or, or individually. And it's just got a, it's got a big bottom end to it. So you don't, when it, some of the gain pedals, when you hit them on, they lose a little bit of bottom end. That one maintains the bottom end. It's really nice. Bom, o Wim perguntou se ele ainda usa o pedal Rocket Pill dele. Ele falou que sim, que é um dos melhores pedais de distorção que ele tem, que ele acha, né, que existe. A lot of happy birthdays to you. <laughs> A lot of what? Happy birthdays. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday wish. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I'm not, you know, I'm not super into celebrating birthdays too much. I think the most funnest thing is my, my daughter is five and I was taking her to school this morning. And I said, so what do you, what about my birthday cake? Cause she's always into the birthday cake thing. And um, she's like, dad, we do it at the night time. Don't you know that? We do the at the <laughs> night time. That's when you get the cake. You have to wait. Okay, daddy? <laughs> you have to wait. <laughs> yeah. But that's the funnest thing, you know, is the, is the birthday cake. Uh, I try to I try to get, you know, a little, you know, I try to get people I was doing some stuff on the phone trying to get the, the Department of Water and Power in Los Angeles to hook me back up from a temporary pole to my house to the real power. And I was, I was like, so when, can you guys, can you come out here on Monday? And they're like, nope, it's too busy. It's COVID. I go, but what if it was my, what if it was my birthday today? Would that help at all? And it was like, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> birthday card. Yeah. <laughs> Always work. Yeah. Uh, um, let yes. me see. I still got the why, why, oh. why did you leave White Snake? Um, I, well, first of all, I love David Coverdale. He's my, he's like really family to me, my big brother. And um, it was, it was basically that I was, um, I'd been away too much from my son. He was four at the time and, and um, his mom and I were, we were breaking up. And so she wanted to, she, she wanted, she needed to do some things for herself, which, which is important for everybody. Everybody needs something to, you know, to look forward to. And some people, they don't mind. They want to just stay home with the kids. But I think she really had some, some plans that she wanted to do. And our, we had been going amicably in, in a, you know, friendly, friendly in a separate direction. And she said, I, I want to go, you know, I want to go do this stuff. And I said, well, I, I, I want Ryder with me. And I got off tour and I started to, um, he moved in with me. I, I, I took a little gig in Vegas uh, in, while well, White Snake was off, and then David said, "You know, I want to get busy working on the Purple record, which was 2014 or 15." And I said to him, "I can come up a couple days a week, but I, I mean, I had always been a thousand percent for White Snake, always, like every minute of every day, I was for White Snake. But at this one time, I had to go. You know what? DC. I call him DC. I go DC. Look, I really need to be there for Ryder. I, and he goes." Br bring him up here. Why don't you guys move up here? I go, no, I can't because I know I'd be working with you. I'll be working t seven days a week and I got to be with this kid. It's important for his growth, you know? So that was the main thing is for family. You know, that's the most important thing always, but I love David. David texted me this morning and um, sent me a copy of the new video he just put out, which is for whipping, uh, whipping boy blues. The, the riff goes, um, it goes, um, <laughs> And, uh, so you just put out a video for that that we wrote together, but um, yeah, so oh. that's that's why. Okay. Então é, perguntaram por que que ele deixou o White Snake. Ele falou que ele sempre esteve na banda, 100%, sempre amou, sempre se deu muito bem é, com eles, mas que ele estava passando por um processo de separação e, e o filho dele era criança 
e a, a esposa dele precisava dele, precisava que ele ficasse é, presente, né? Porque ele ia ficar com, 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 com o filho dele também. Então, ele teve que fazer uma escolha e se dedicar um pouquinho mais à família, né? No momento que ele precisava. Deixa eu ver. Gabriel Arruda, send me a question on private. And he wants to know if it's true that Ronnie James introduced you to Coverdale during a Lakers game. And that's basically the story about how you joined <laughs> Whitesnake. No. <laughs> no. I, like that. I like that story, though. I don't think Ronnie or David were Lakers fans. but Because um, <laughs> I never heard either one of them talk about the Lakers. But uh, no, I met. I had met Ron. Did, did you hear this story before? No. Oh, no. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Um, I, I met Ronnie back in 1990, and I was, I was trying to stay with my band that I was, my first band that got a record deal. It was called Lion, and I wanted to stay with that band. And, um, you know, Ronnie offered me the job, and I just said, listen, I'm not ready to cut out with this band. Eventually, the band broke up. Record deal was no good. So when Ronnie called me back about 10 years later, 11 years later, he said, um, I would like you to play a couple of solos on the, on the record, on the new record. I go, forget that. He goes, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do everything. I want to join the band. So he goes, okay, start tomorrow. So that was it. So I, I'm, so Ronnie and I started working. Eventually um, he told me when we were on tour, he goes, you know, people are going to, a few gigs and everything and I hope you'll stay you know and I said I have no plan on going anywhere but what you know my first band Lion that I mentioned was very much like a junior White Snake. we were really influenced by the early White Snake and Thin Lizzy and stuff like that Deep Purple and so uh, when David called me he said it's just a two-month tour so that's why I said yes you know because it was only meant to be two months but me and David It really was like family, you know, with him, where he was um, the big brother that I never had. And very yeah. much, very much the same with Glenn, you know, Glenn, me and Glenn are super close. And um, it was such a great thing to, um, when Glenn got in the band, I don't know if you know the story, but we went to the south of France to record Holy Ground. And, um, and the band really got to bond and we were, sleeping there, eating there, recording there, basically not, not having to go anywhere except focus on the music. And I think it was, it was perfect, you know? And so it became a family much faster that way. Oh. É, eu falei para ele de uma pergunta que chegou aqui para mim no privado, do Gabriel Arruda, que ele perguntou se era verdade que o, que o Rony é, apresentou ele para o Coverdale durante um jogo do Lakers e foi assim que ele entrou no White Snake. Ele falou que não, que ele nunca ouviu essa história. Que ele já conhecia ele antes, né, e tal. Ele tinha uma banda antes que era muito influenciada é, pelo, pelo começo do White Snake, Tim Lizzy, e que quando ele ligou para ele, né, ele falou de novo que ele ligou para convidar para dois meses de, de turnê, só que eles ficaram muito amigos. Ele é o irmão que ele nunca teve. E que, que basicamente foi assim, eles são bem próximos. E aí falou, ele é, citou o Glenn de novo, falou que a relação deles também é bem parecida, eles são bem próximos e quando eles gravaram o, o, o álbum Dead Days, eles ficaram numa casa super próximos, convivendo todos os dias e que eles se sentem como uma grande família. Ok, so I think we have five minutes more. I will pick another question. Ok. Let's see. That's a good one. Post pedal, before or after the wall pedal? This is, um, that's a great question. So That's a great right, question, yeah. <laughs> right, right now I got this fuzz pedal in, in front of the wall pedal. Here's what it sounds like. So here's the fuzz. works really good you can put it in front but when you put it when you put the wah behind the fuzz it really squawks the fuzz in a really cool way um so that's how i prefer it but that that okay. said that said sometimes i'll have um like i'll have a fuzz pedal in front of the 
wah, and then I'll have the rocket fuel behind the wah, and it works great. Sometimes I'll use both together. Cool. That's a good question. Uh, yeah. A lot of happy birthday wishes. Everyone is saying happy birthday too. Well, you know, <laughs> We have over I, 100 happy birthday too. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got a lot of friends in Brazil. Um, I've been there a few times. Well, with went there with Glenn and went there a few times with White Snake. And um, it's just it's an amazing country. I um, I can't wait to come back. One time, um, White Snake played in. Uh, In, in the um, in Manaus, so I had to get wow. the, mm -hmm. I had to get the yellow fever shot. So then the last time I was there was with the Dead Daisies in 2017. So we we very much want to come back. We can't wait to get back to Brazil. Um, some some of the greatest fans in the world, like you know, there's a few countries, but I'm going to say Brazil is at the top of the list. Oh, cool. Gente, ele falou que o Brasil está no topo da lista dos lugares favoritos para ele tocar. Ele tocou em Manaus em 2017 e que foi muito divertido e ele tem muitos, muitos, muitos amigos aqui. Eu estava falando que todo mundo estava mandando parabéns, né? Feliz aniversário para ele e ele fez este comentário. Uh, that's a, a good question here. What's the favorite solo that you made? Favorite solo that I made was probably... Um... I would say maybe um, it's hard to say. There's a lot. There's a lot of solos from the. Dead you can Daisies, you can mention three, three okay. your top three from the Dead Daisies. I would say probably um, I really like the solo for uh, "Come Alive" on the on the Holy Ground album. It's very melodic. It's very simple, um, like four notes, and and I yeah, I just thought and for this album kind of less is more, you know, is more melody would be important. So um, Come Alive is a kick-ass rock song, and then it gets to this big, giant melody. It's kind of, I kind of was influenced by Gary Moore on that. And then um, White Snake, um, All I Want, All I Need is a really melodic one that I, I, I really struggled to get the right feel and the right notes. But if you check out the album Good To Be Bad, it's on there. And um, On the last Dead Daisies, well, then there's a deal, um, Better in the Dark, that solo. I remember Ronnie was, like, really happy with that solo. But the last Dead Daisies um, has, some, has some pretty cool stuff. Um, resurrected solo is pretty cool. And um, it's just got some, some really cool aggressiveness. Um, the other song I like on the, the last Dead Daisies is um, What Goes Around Comes Around. Uh, I believe that's what it's, I'm spacing. But anyway, it's a it's a, <laughs> check out check out the uh, the new album Holy Ground. It's got some good stuff on it, um, and like I said, less is more, more melodic stuff like that. Cool. Uh, perguntaram qual que era o solo favorito dele. Ele achou que era muito difícil falar um, então eu falei para ele falar três. É, ele falou que uh, do Dead Days ele gosta do Come Alive, que ele acha uma melodia simples, mas me pô. É, ele falou do, do Goes Around, Comes Around também uh, Do White Snake, All I Want, All I Need E do Dio, Better in the Dark E ele falou pra dar uma ouvida aí no, no álbum Dead Days, né? O Holy Ground Que tá com bastante solos melódicos Bastante coisas interessantes Então o nosso tempo tá chegando ao fim Eu vou me despedir dele uh, So, uh, thank you very much Thank you so much yeah. It was a huge pleasure All of us, we are very fan. But we're, we're a fan. And uh, see you in Brazil soon. Yes, definitely as soon as possible. Probably maybe the end of the year or the beginning of next year. But I just want to say thank you to all our Brazilian fans and friends. And thank you to you. Uh, we love you guys. We can't wait to come back. And we really appreciate all your support for us. I mean, like... I think Brazil is the top country outside of the U.S. that that people that support me. So it's really special. I'm really a gr grateful to be on this show. So thank you guys so much. Stay strong and healthy, and and we'll see you soon. See you. Thank you very much, Dogen. Happy birthday again. All the best for you. Thank you thank for you talking to us. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm. See ya. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs>
<risos> I will drop you. <risos> Galera, muito obrigada aí quem acompanhou a nossa entrevista. É, ele falou agora no final que ele está muito feliz de ter feito essa entrevista, porque ele, o Brasil é um dos lugares mais especiais da carreira dele, é onde tem mais pessoas que apoiam ele, ele tem muitos amigos, é, muitos fãs. E agradeceu e falou que provavelmente no final do ano, começo do ano que vem, ele estará por aqui, tocando com o Dead Day. Então é isso. Muito obrigada e até mais. Valeu. A gente vai subir esse vídeo, tá? Pra ficar disponível quem chegou aí no final é, e quiser ver aí desde o começo, quem pegou no meio, vai estar tá tudo certinho. E é nóis. Valeu.